question. Uh, today we're announcing that we have built a version of our vast uh, data platform solution that can now run end-to-end -end on NVIDIA's Bluefield DPUs, uh, which is a really, really good solution for large AI scale infrastructure build-outs that are happening. Um, and so I wanted, I'll go into more detail and kind of some of the best, uh, kind of the, the benefits of what this looks like in just a second, but I wanted to invite uh, John Kim, uh, who's uh, Director of Storage Marketing um, at NVIDIA to come join me. Sure, hi everyone, I'm John Kim and I'm Director of Storage Marketing at NVIDIA. I'm in the networking group and I focus on our uh, data processing units, which are as well as on storage solutions and storage partners Great. like Vast Data. Were you um, at Mellanox prior to the acquisition? I was. So I've been working in networking and prior to Mellanox, I actually worked for uh, enterprise storage companies. Okay. So Not Extreme IO. But Mellanox, that's the thing. That's <laughs> right. Well, I did work a year for, for uh, EMC, okay. but not in the Extreme IO group. We forgive you though, so it's okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay. I don't know how many of the delegates know what, I'm sorry, I'm just, I'm, I just don't want to assume here, right? Everyone knows CPU, GPU, DPU. Maybe you can kind of break that down just to level set, make sure everyone understands what a DPU is and what is it good for? Why does it even exist? What are the- Sure, are sure. Well, I assume everyone already knows CPU and GPU. DPU is data processing unit and it focuses on accelerating and offloading the infrastructure in the data center. By infrastructure, I mean typically networking, uh, storage tasks and uh, security, uh, also maybe remote management. And um, we made the announcement today specifically about Bluefield. Could you explain a little bit about the Bluefield product specifically sure. from NVIDIA? So Bluefield is the NVIDIA DPU. Our latest generation is the Bluefield 3. And it's, uh, again, as I said, it accelerates infrastructure in the data center. So it does you know, networking first and then uh, storage security and management as well. And we're really excited that now it's working on the vast C node. So this is a way of bringing, uh, as you said, bringing the data you know, closer to the compute. You, know, you can move the compute closer to the data or you can bring the, the data and the storage closer to the compute. And this, tech, this solution working together with VAST uh, is one way of bringing that storage and that data right to the compute layer where the GPUs are. Yeah, I'll pull up a slide in, in just a second. It kind of shows what um, the new VAST solution looks like. Um, but Yesterday we were chatting, uh, or this week we were chatting, I don't know, this week's been a blur. Uh, but the DPU, just to, just to make sure you know, everyone understands, the DPU is effectively a, a data processing unit, but it serves as kind of like two functions, right? A, a, a NIC on one hand, and then there's also like some amount of processing capabilities on the card. That, that's right, it has the integrated NIC, a smart NIC. Uh -huh. You can do all sorts of accelerated networking and some data encryption, but it also has programmable CPU cores. And in the case of NVIDIA Bluefield, these are ARM cores. ARM cores. Fairly yeah. advanced cores, uh, up to 16 of them, which can be used to run storage software mm -hmm. or management tasks uh, or other applications like that, including other, you know, other types of data acceleration or data offloads. Okay, yeah. It reminds me a lot of what um, some of the hyperscalers do to kind of do special sauce stuff uh, inside of their own data centers? Is right. that kind of- Well, it turns right? out that a lot of the hyperscalers, probably most of them, are implementing some kind of DPU. You know, it might be NVIDIA's or it might be their own. Okay. You know, but uh, in their infrastructure, because it just makes sense when you have a very large scale cloud infrastructure that every server wants to have accelerated networking, accelerated storage, say virtualization, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, maybe accelerated encryption. Uh, and so, for example, if you go to uh, look at AWS, they put a kind of DPU, you know, it's their own in this case, in just about every server that's in the AWS cloud. Okay. And because that's what makes sense at that kind of scale. And what is the main, like, what is the main benefit of doing that as a hyperscaler? Like, what are some of the reasons why they would do that? Well, so first of all, you get, of course, the accelerated networking, storage functionality, you can do encryption and security, but you also get some functional isolation. So, for example, you can give, tenants can rent bare metal servers, which, uh, you know, as far as they can tell, not running any agents, not running any extra hypervisor or container management other than what the tenant wants. But at the same time, the cloud service provider is able to do management or secure boot or isolated diagnostics or network telemetry yeah. off of this DPU uh, and make that, that capability available without interfering with the tenant's use of the server. Okay. 
That is very interesting. Uh, I knew all those answers, so I was obviously seeding those questions. Right. Uh, softball questions. Softball appreciate, questions, I yeah. Appreciate those all um, so yeah, I mean, exactly what John said, right? We, we've we actually, like I said earlier, we've been working and been fortunate to work with a lot of cloud service providers over the last 12, 18 months. Um, we've had this idea in the works for quite some time. Um, and we've now actually got even customers like CoreWeave, our partners in CoreWeave have deployed this uh, into production. So what this looks like is a little different. You saw, you might remember the previous slide I showed about our day's architecture, which had a bunch of containers at the top and a bunch of disks on the bottom, right? What we've effectively done is we ported our, what was formerly known for those of you following us, our C node container or our, our logic container now runs directly. It runs on the Bluefield DPU itself. Bluefield DPUs are oftentimes deployed inside of AI systems, NVIDIA GPUs, naturally. Um, and what this gives is, is exactly what, what, what John mentioned, right? You get, you get a lot of the security aspects. You get to offer bare metal access, maximum GPU performance, because you give that to the tenant, but without any of the compromises in terms of security. So we enable a zero trust security uh, approach. There also happens to be a major data center efficiency. We've done the math, and when you go to this model, you can actually see that um, we're trading some of our x86, our former x86-based uh, processing nodes, our C nodes, right? And we're instead putting in, um, you know, it takes up more power in the server on the client side, but overall that nets out to be somewhere like 5% of data center power savings, which when you're talking about megawatts, it's not nothing, it's a lot. Tens to hundreds of kilowatts that you could save by moving to this uh, moving to this architecture deployment model. The other thing that we get is, this is kind of a, a byproduct of our software architecture, but you get a ridiculous amount of QoS because what each of these blue fields serve is they, they effectively become like a dedicated data server for that one client machine, right? And there is no sharing of this blue field with other machines, as you can imagine, right? Now every single server, client server, has dedicated uh, uh, data services right inside of its own PCIe bus, right, instead. Uh, the last thing is, I don't know if you even know this, but we've also integrated with um, a software framework called Doka, mm -hmm. which uh, Doka actually allows us to provide block storage services to boot. That's pun intended. You can actually boot off of the Bluefield device without having a local NVMe disk inside of the machine. These are hugely important capabilities for service providers that don't want to go and re-image machine after machine when you switch over tenants from one to the other. So I'm pretty excited about this. This is, I think this is going to be um, a huge win for not only service providers, but also for enterprises. Um, I do have a couple of other questions. Uh, I had one written down. I just want to make sure I don't forget it. So John, yeah. have you taken the cluster node functionality that VAST supplied on their x86 servers yep. and moved it to the DPU? Bingo. We slimmed it down. It's not a it's not a exact copy for copy, but we moved the, the I.O. functionality specifically directly onto the DPU. And the intent is to free up the x86 CPU. You could probably get rid of a large sum of them and then stay tuned for the next partner I'm going to bring up and talk about this in a little bit more detail. Right. Yeah, it frees up x86 CPU cycles, which means that they can be used to run more AI tasks or other management tasks, things unrelated to the storage. And it also brings the basically the storage controller into the GPU server. Were, were you talking about x86 cores in the GPU server or in the VAST cluster? In the VAST cluster. So yes, we. so normally in the classic way, you would deploy an x86 server here, right? A layer here. A lot of those disappear in this model. That functionality, the IO processing actually now runs on the DPU in the host. But what John said is also true. A lot of other file systems in the space have to run in the host operating system, if you're running a parallel file system, for example, you have to run it on the host operating system, which is not secure and also consumes resources of that client machine, right? This solves all of those problems. Are you saying then that the DPUs don't have to have a client machine? The DPUs don't have to have a what? A I'm sorry? client machine? They're just... They are in the client. They are in the client. Sorry, this should actually be inside the client, so... Okay. So in the yeah. traditional architecture, the GPU servers yeah. would access you know, the, the vast C nodes or controller nodes, which would then access 
the, the vast disks. storage enclosure of the disks. And that, and that solution works great. And we, we actually have customers deploying our GPU servers with vast that way. But this solution now brings, it integrates it and brings the controller nodes into the GPU servers. And we are uh, already shipping our Bluefield uh, DPUs in a lot of our AI servers. So in our HGX servers, and I think we've announced it for our, uh, I think for uh, MGX and OVX servers. And I expect, you know, going forward, it'll be a trend to see NVIDIA incorporate the Bluefield into more and more of our own AI servers or AI server designs that our server partners build. And so that gives the ability to now run that vast, you know, vast software in the GPU server instead of as a separate uh, layer. Like a GPX super pod could be running on DPUs with vast storage services? That's maybe, correct. The, the platform services, whatever you want to call it? Conceptually, yes, that's exactly right. The current DGX does not actually have a, uh, a DPU in it right now, uh, but... But HGX OEM servers can. Right. Right, and eight way of, OEM servers can. Yes, and a lot of the o, uh, OEM uh, in designs with NVIDIA GPUs are built on the HGX uh, server design. Yeah, with the blue field inside. What do you think? That's well, kind of cool. Generally pretty cool. The, <laughs> it's been a promise uh, for a long time to be able to get something like a blue field DPU closer to the server. So these services that add value at the client or at the server is offloaded from the CPU. So the CPU has more cycles to do its thing. AWS is, you know, kind yep. of massive with their platform. So actually bring, seeing a product that's actually in the data center today makes you know, it's so pretty. Good. In your own data center, deal. in your own data center. Yeah, yeah it's, it's a big deal, it's a big deal. Thank you, <laughs> not just generally, but yeah, okay, appreciate it. All right, I am out of time, but okay. John, thank you for being here. Thank, thank you for you. the partnership, we appreciate it. We're, I am personally very excited about this, so. Yeah, we're very excited about this announcement, Vest, and uh, looking forward to see even more great things we're doing together in the future. Thank you, All right. okay.